Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, you better be manifesting, planning and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. If this is your first, second or third time to my YouTube channel, welcome, happy to have you guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell before you guys leave uh, so when, you get, when I drop these content and you guys get that notification, you come into Difference World and you come and learn what's going on with your girl. And speaking of Difference World, you guys, a little bit of background about me. I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, be sure before you guys leave, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys. Uh, today is Wednesday, hump day, you guys, March 1st, 2023. So happy hump day, you guys, as well as today is the first day of Women's History month 2023 so happy women's history month uh, to all the ladies out there in the world uh, this is our month and our time uh, to stand up be heard and 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 do our thing as you guys see I have the red on for us um, and so this vlog uh, you know on Wednesdays we do our podcast content so this one is going to be in a collaboration uh, with the wonderful uh, own Houstonian another Houston native like myself her name is Zen Asi um, Asi excuse me Zen Asi uh, she liked me as into meditation, chakra healing, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, having the Zenergy, she calls it, her Zenergy podcast. And so I had a great time, you know, on her show, talking with her about my new book or my uh, <laughs> book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, this interview, it actually took place uh, in 2021 and it debuted the day before my mother passed. And so I... Uh, I, of course, during that time, I had no idea what was going on on the outside world. I was just more so focused on, you know, being with my mom. Um, and so uh, it dropped the day that she passed, uh, Christmas Day. She she died in my arms the day after Christmas uh, in 2021. And so i like to dedicate this interview uh, to her in, our, in honor of her. You know, everything I do, uh, I, I do it by honoring her and keeping her memory and her name alive. And so this one is for you, Mother, uh, Vernchelle Raynette Shinnevert. Um, and so without further ado and me talking so much, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. You guys, my audio interview with the Zen, Zenergy Podcast with Zen, Zen and Say. Uh, it's about an hour long, you guys. So this is one of the longest interviews I did. We had such a great time talking. And so rather than you guys hear me talk anymore, here it is. Check it out. Welcome to Zenergy, the interactive podcast providing resources for building a better life. I am Zen Ashe. I am your conduit, your coach, and your catalyst of that better life. A coach draws out hidden potential in a subject. A conduit provides a connection and a catalyst sparks change. So today our topic is enlightenment, and I am here with the author, Different. So say hi to the people out there. Hey, everybody. Hi, Zen. Thank you for having me. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. <laughs> I'm so happy to be on your show. I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I guess first we'll start off with how did you come up with the name different uh, and spelling it that way? Well, I guess if you, if, I've been going by different for the longest now. Even in college, people would call me different. You know, just coming up, I was that different type of kid. I wasn't that one that ran with the regular card. I, I moved to the beat of my own drum. Uh, I didn't hang out with the kids coming up. I mostly, you know, hung under the grown folks and, you know, hung out with the old school. So I was an old soul, if you will, coming up. And um, with that being said, the, the, the term different, a lot of times people say, oh, I'm different. I'm not like the rest. But for me, when I say different, it's in a humbling term. It's, it's that, you know, I'm not who I was in the sense of, you know, all the flaws that I had and all the things that, you know, I used to do that, you know, would push people away or, you know, make me out to be the bad person to put me in a bad light. I'm different from what I was. I've changed. I've grown. I've, you know, progressed and moved on and moved up. You know, so when I say that and when people hear that from me, that's what that means. Not of vanity, it's of humility. To be different than what you was in the past. To be your better self, to be your higher self be different than what you was. Awesome. Well, you know, I kind of had an idea that you were going to go in that direction because our topic tonight is actually enlightenment. And you kind of actually started us on that journey by saying that you are not where you were. You are more enlightened. So you have 
um, you know, a lot of people think of enlightenment as like a light bulb going off, an epiphany. They have this realization that takes them on their journey in a different mm-hmm. direction. Um, and they, they feel like they've gained some wisdom, some insight, some understanding in, you know, how to live their life or what life is about, what, what, what matters. Um, mm-hmm. So why did you pick the topic enlightenment? Well, as far as what enlightenment goes, well, when you say enlightenment, let's let's say with third eye for me, that's the name of my business, third eye ENT, and being in tune spiritually with your third eye. Uh, for me, when you say where well, my my path of enlightenment begins, it's where you know I started to realize I needed to check my mental health. That's where the path of enlightenment or, or to get my third eye in tune began for me. It's where I realized, you know, all of my past issues from my childhood all into my young adulthood, all, you know, that I was, the baggage that I had was bringing all into me. I'm only 30 now, but I, I started to realize that if I did not change now and take the reins and, you know, admit to myself the ugly truth that I needed to fix my issues, then, you know, I was going to be one of those, you know, Robin Williams or Anthony Bourdain types, you know, one of my favorite people, if you will, uh, those that look good on the outside, but on the inside, they just dying slowly. And then to one day, they they take take it out, take it in their own hands to end it all. And I didn't want to be one of those people, you know, that leave behind so many people that love me and that care about me. It would have hurt them. And so all of that, that, you know, what I'm dealing with as well as being, like I said, just being spiritually in tune with God. I won't say that I'm a religious person. So I'm more so a spiritual. I had to lose my religion in order to gain my relationship and Get, get a better understanding of who God was and what he has placed me on this earth for. So, you know, when I was a religious person, if you will, I was living to please others and show that, oh, I'm a godly person or I act this way or certain this way. It was too overrated for me. So no disrespect to anybody out there, you know, listening that that's, you know, have a religious much respect to you. But, you know, for me, this is me personally, I had to detach myself from that you know, notion of religion and then, you know, get an understanding and get along with God and, you know, read his word and get my own interpretations of what he is saying to me and what he wants me to do in this life, you know, what he's giving me, you know, purpose for. Um, and, and I guess it can all in, in terms of, you know, in terms of how, you know, this book came about, my business came about, um, there was the issue to where, I squandered an opportunity a while back to where I could have been taken off, you know, along well, uh, going back into my, my background coming up, I had a really, really tough upbringing uh, around the time I was 11 years old. I ended up on the streets, you know, me and my family were homeless and for about three years, we basically lived pillow to post. And so, you know, sleeping, you know, car shelters, relatives, strangers, you know, crack houses even one time, you name it, uh, we slept and at the time I was 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative. And uh, the first six months that I was there, I tried my hardest to come home and around, I think three months after being in, I found out that uh, if you stayed and aged out, that the state of Texas would pay for your full ride to college. So right then and there, a light bulb went out of my head. And, you know, I thought, you know, let me use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just duke it out here in these four four years out in CPS. And then by the time I get done and age out and graduate from high school, I'll have a full ride to college. And so by the time my family did find out where I was, they tried to get me to come home. I told them that I was going to stay because, you know, I had an opportunity, you know, to do it better myself and so that's just what I did and by the time I'm 18 and graduated from Elsick High School on the south side of Houston, Texas, uh, I went on to San Francisco State University so shout out to all the Bearcats out there if you're listening to watching Huntsville, Texas uh, and within that opportunity in itself was just such a best thing. I got to do so many things and meet so many people and learn, you know, so many new things. I even got to start my own student organization uh, called Pay It Forward to where we were, uh, had three main sections and where we educated, mentored and volunteered uh, to the youth in foster care as well as the youth in general. We also spoke at high schools 
uh, to juniors and seniors about the importance of education. And that is where, you know, the bug, or the, the little bug for me or the spark was landed for me to start doing motivational speaking. And uh, I would share my stories with the high school kids and they would be so inspired. And they would just tell me, you know, what they were going through. And so fast forward, you know, I graduate. Well, before I graduate, I got the opportunity to travel abroad uh, to Kim Young University in South Korea. And so I spent four months over there. And within those four months, I got to travel to eight other countries. And so although my story is started in tri a tragedy, it's going to end in triumph, no matter what, because I claim it in God's name. And even in such, you know, he kept blessing me on, you know, I graduated, you know, with my degree in international business and ended up getting two minors with business communication and economics. And I have my master's degree in entrepreneurship, as well as I'm a Texas real estate agent. And now I'm the CEO of my own business. So, again, although my story started in tragedy, it's going to end in triumph because I, I manifest, plan and prepare for it. And you'll understand what I mean when I say that later on. Um, but again, with the spiritual uh, alignment where it begins, not, not to let you know, I'm on track with it, but with all that, you know, all those notches under my belt, all those accomplishments, you know, I still had baggage. I still had demons to battle. And like I said, you know, coming up with that baggage, you know, for me, before I got put into foster care, uh, I know a lot of people out, people out there listening, they may be, be able to relate, but for me, chaos was normal, you know, coming up in the environment. So when I got taken out of that environment and placed into CPS, I actually got placed into good foster homes and very good school districts. However, for me, I just felt it was too good to be true and I didn't belong there, you know, I was just of a different breed, you know. And so uh, for me, I was just that type of person, you know, I'm the captain of this ship. I decide when it's time for it to go down. So I would gain that, that notion of starting to sabotage and push people away and mess up all the little opportunities that I had for me. and so it would be like that for me all throughout you know high school college and even into my adult uh, years my, my early 20s I would squander good opportunities and it was this opportunity that I told you earlier that I squandered and it made me realize and face the ugly truth that it, that I needed to go and fix my issues you know whatever I've been through in my childhood, you know, it was out of my control. It wasn't my fault, but somehow, some way, it was my problem to deal with, and it was on me to fix. Because now, as an adult, I can't continue to do those things, those little defense mechanisms I did as a child. I got to do something different now. You know, otherwise, this is just going to be a perpetual cycle that's going to drag me down and lower and lower and lower, and it's going to lead me on a path of self-destruction and, and a point of no return. And so that was that point that I had to face. And so then and there for me, what I did is dismiss that notion, you know, and, and, and our community, the black community, some people say, you know, black people don't do therapy. Uh, and, and, you know, so a lot of us, we, we, we have those feelings that, you know, we're not going to go talk about our feelings. We're going to keep it bottled up. You know, we have that sense of pride or we're too ashamed or we're too embarrassed to talk about it. Or we're just taught, you know, that notion of when we come up, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And so, you know, we're just taught not to talk about, you know, how we feel or even in the black male community, you know, how they taught, you know, men don't cry. They can't show their emotions. They have to suck it up and be tough. You know, so a lot of, you know, their issues are bottled up and which leads them to having mental health issues and then ultimately leads to suicide for some. And so that's where, you know, it all stimulates and goes back to. And so for me, I had to go back to the root of the issues, which was, you know, my childhood, my childhood. And so, um, like I said, just mission that notion that we don't do therapy. I went to therapy and I got serious about it. And for the past two years now, I've been consistent and consecutive about it. And I'm very proud to say that, I'm not ashamed to admit it. And just take this moment in time to say anybody out there who is going through, you know, any type of depression, you know, emotional distress, feeling suicidal or, you know, being, being bullied, just know that you are not alone. It's okay not to be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go find somebody to talk to, a therapist, a family member, a friend, uh, find a hobby, do something, you know, get a mental health checklist.
to get yourself back in order is, is on you. Like I said, whatever you went through, whether it was your fault, you know, it, 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 or whether it was or was not, you know, whatever happens somehow, some way, it's your problem and it's on you to deal with. You can't expect the person who hurt you or wronged you to, you know, offer a sincere apology and sit around and wait and expect for them to, you know, come back and acknowledge the wrong that they did because they're not. They've moved on and live in their lives and moved on to the next bit. So it's on you to, you know, fix whatever, you know, wounds that are hurting you or keeping you up at night. And that's just what it was for me. And so on the spiritual path of enlightenment <laughs> and just, you know, talking with my therapist and just getting back into my old root of ways and, and also with God, he is a main part of it for me, just talking with him and getting in that Bible and praying. Again, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not trying to be a preachy, preachy person here, but for me, I can't get up here and say, like, I'm self-made. I'm God-made. This is, this is what God, before I leave this earth, I want my life to be an example of what God can, you know, do for those who, who have made plenty of mistakes, thousands of thousands. of mistakes but yet still you know he blesses you he uses you and shows his mercy and what his grace can do and he can take you from the back and put you to the front just like that and that's just what he's done for me all throughout my life every part of the section of my life my, my childhood my teenage years my young adult age you know in my 30s my 40s it hasn't come to pass yet, but I know whatever he's going to throw at me the trials and tribulations he won't give me nothing more than I can handle and so uh, it was all, you know, I want to say 51% God, 49% me, you know, just, just getting along, being spiritually in tune, opening up, getting in that Bible and just getting an understanding, you know, of, you know, the spiritual realm and the understanding that there's a spiritual battle out there that's being fought for us and that we have to help fight. And that's why, you know, this set he says, or that's that notion we walk by faith and not by sight, you know, because well, you know, we have to. Go, go ahead. I know I talk a lot. I should have warned you, girl. I'm long-winded, so feel free to interject. Yeah. Um, I wanted to comment on several things that you said. You know, um, we all have traumas and baggage, and enlightenment to me is that realization that I think it was Einstein that said the thinking that created the problem can't solve the problem. You actually have to elevate your thinking. You have to become enlightened. You have to expose yourself to new things, um, whether that's going to therapy, whether that's reading books, whether that's going to seminars, praying, meditating, getting a mentor. There are many ways to expose yourself to new things, but whatever thinking created that problem, like we, as you mentioned, you had defense mechanisms. And those defense mechanisms at one time might have been very helpful, but then later they can become hindrances. You know, just like if you had a, a bike and you had training wheels on that bike, well, the training wheels are helpful, but you're supposed to take them off because they mm -hmm. eventually they have to come off. Right. They keep you going at a very slow pace and they also are really hindering you from learning how to balance on your own. You know, they're hindering your your independence, you know, because you're basically using it as a crutch. So, you know, we have to, you know, part of enlightenment is realizing that we should always be on a journey of growth and that we should never stop learning. Um, I, I read books all the time and I just read The Alchemist, which is a fiction book. But what? <laughs> I just That's finished it. Like, I can never just, because I always have something going on. So when those, those big Big, juicy books I have to like set out a time a month a weekend where I'm just gonna sit down and read it and have nothing to do but I'm always in the mix I always have something going on so if I do read well, a book it has to be a little a little miniature book it can't be the thick ones but I I, I, I listen to so audio books a lot so you know when I go to that's work that's, that's, like that's a good idea the alchemist I believe was like almost five hours uh, of audio so if okay. I'm driving that, to that's work something I can back, do in like a day. No, but I'm saying if I'm driving to work and back, that's an hour for me total round trip. So in a five day work week, I could actually read that book, you know, and not read it, listen to it. 
Um, you know what? Another light bulb went out of my head. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, I just got to find some time. Maybe a weekend. Like, I can finish that five hours a Sunday. Maybe like a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Audio. But I'm, I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up because the alchemist has the whole idea of everyone has a personal legend. They have a personal, basically, purpose, a reason they were put on this earth. And as you begin to fulfill your purpose, the universe is conspiring to help you bring in people and and omens and um, challenges your way to help you grow into the person that can create that personal legend and make it come true. Um, and so it's, it's really about this young boy who's meeting all these people on his journey to his personal legend. And some of these people have given up on their personal legend and some of them are, uh, on the journey with him to go to their personal legend, but he's meeting all these people who have messed up thinking. Some of them are afraid of failure. Some of them are afraid of of looking foolish. Some of them are afraid of giving up their security to go out on any kind of adventure. You know, some of them are afraid of success because they're so comfortable with what they have been doing that the whole idea that they have to stretch out of that comfort zone is is daunting. Can't stand complacency. Yeah. So you know, enlightenment is is realizing you know that. If I want to grow, I have to learn new things to become a new person. And I have to take off those old thoughts and those limiting thoughts. Um, So as he goes through this journey, you see him shedding these limitations in his thought patterns. And you see him realizing things. He starts realizing what he's learning. And he's really taking in what he's learning. And through what he's learning... He's becoming a totally different person. He's becoming the person that could create that personal legend. Because when he first mm-hmm. started out, he wasn't really that person. You know, so it's it's a really powerful, uh, inspirational book. And when I finished that, I started Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, and that's another one. That's, that's nonfiction, but mm-hmm. it has a lot of similarities because he's talking about two different mindsets. And how at nine years old, he asked his poor dad, how do you make money? And his dad was like, I don't really know. Uh, I'm not the person to ask. I'm not rich. You need to ask a rich person. You need to ask your friend whose dad isn't rich right now, but he looks like he's going to get there. You know, he looks like he's going to be rich. Ask him. And then I'm only about three chapters into the book, but you see how he's uh the author is constantly comparing this mindset of of poverty and limitation and lack with this mindset of let's take some risks let's learn about financial um planning let's learn about um how to use money how to make money work for us and Mm -hmm. over here it's i'm gonna work for money on the other side it's money's gonna work for me and Mm -hmm. so it's this idea of for him to become what he wants to become a rich man he has to be enlightened and enlightenment Mm -hmm. is not just book knowledge it's actually the actions putting into play what he's learning from his rich dad you know because his rich dad basically says i'm not going to teach you if you're not going to use it so i'm going to give you a lesson and then you have to go do it I'm going to give you a lesson and you have to go do it. And if at any time you stop doing it, I'm going to stop teaching you. You know, that's awesome. it's, yeah, it's a very it's so it's it's a kind of an active enlightenment. Um, and this whole idea of like when the student is ready, the teacher appears, which is a famous saying, you know, so um Just to think about how we have to, like you were talking about, taking off that baggage, going to therapy so you can learn some different um, ways of thinking, some different coping mechanisms, and you could get rid of the the sabotaging habits or whatever patterns of thought that you had before. And then you were talking about how you got all these different opportunities. You know, I love how one decision is never really one decision. It's a door that leads to many other opportunities. Yeah, it's a link in a chain. And Mm -hmm. so 
you decided to stay in foster care, which opened the door for you to get a full ride to to college, which opened the door for you to go overseas, which opened the door for you to go to eight different trips, you know, and open the door for yeah. you to meet different people uh, and even start, like you said, a group that you had on campus. You know, that one decision, you just thought it was going to have one result of I'm going to get this degree, but it had so many results, you know, and so that's kind of why it's really important for us to try to make the best decisions we can because they're not they're not isolated. You know, um, mm-hmm. I heard somebody bring up the poem, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, you know, two roads diverge in the yellow wood, you know, and I looked down one and then I took the other. And that has made all the difference. And I thought maybe I'll go back and take the other one. But knowing how way leads on the way, you know, it probably mm-hmm. won't happen. Because sometimes when we get on that path, we, we can't go back, you know. Yeah. That, that opportunity is gone. So, And even you saying that you, you missed an opportunity, that was, you know, a, a way that you began to get enlightened. Because you were like, I'm not going to do that again. I, I, I now say, yeah, I, I won't say it's a mistake now. I, I say it's a lesson learned. It just taught me, hey, you need to get it together. It's on you now. You want to be that businesswoman you claim, and you want this, you want that. It's on you to get it together and come with it, you know. Mean what you say, say what you mean. That's just what it was for me, and it got me serious about the business, you know. And, and it was just a word from God. It's ever evolving, if you will, and it's, it's not stopping. Yeah, I do think that the universe will test you sometimes to see if you really want what you say you want. And we have a couple mm-hmm. of people that are popping in and out. So, you know, if you're on the, the, the live right now, you can definitely, um, you know, put your name in the chat. We can shout you out, you know, definitely. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, you can definitely invite your friends to join in. You know, we want people to... Um, be able to post their comments and what they think about this topic of enlightenment. You know, um, I think, I think I was always on a journey of enlightenment, even as a kid, I I didn't just take things people told me and, and accept everything that people told me. I wanted to learn for myself. I had a lot of questions and I I really wanted to know. I wanted to, I wanted to understand things. I got, I went to Catholic school until I was in um, seventh grade. I got in trouble with the nuns a lot because I had a lot of questions. I got in trouble with the priests. Um, How was that? It was it was a great it was a great experience in terms of education because the standards are really high. But uh, me having so many questions um, mm-hmm. that was problematic for them, and and it was yeah. problematic for me in terms of if. If you're telling me stop asking these questions or God is mysterious, I can't understand him. That's a problem to me. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you're the adult. You should be able to explain to me. I'm a kid. You know, why can't exactly. you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, uh, so, for me, it was, you know, because yeah. I said, so I don't ask this, that, you know, as you talking back. But in actuality, I just wanted to know what was right. this? What was that? But me being just like you, I got to ask. Uh, you were the first black person I've heard that's gone to Catholic school and <laughs> can I ask you know how that was were there others like us there or was it um, one of those schools to where you were all school spot, if you don't mind and I was a spot um there was there were five um of us there were two black boys and there were two other black girls and so I was the fifth black person and then there was a, a Hawaiian and an Asian so there were seven mm. minorities in the entire school um, that I knew. Uh, if there was anybody else, I didn't see them. So, mm. yeah, that was pretty much it. And so so I was definitely very self-conscious at the time. And then I think enlightenment is also uh, kind of growing into your wisdom and your knowledge of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, um uh, you know, the Egyptians said, know thyself. The philosophers said, know thyself. Um, mm-hmm. And if you know yourself, then, you know, you you know a lot, you know, because um, I think there was a saying that the Japanese said there were three powers. There was the power of the sword. There was the power of the word. And there was the power of knowing yourself. 
you know, oh, and mm. four, four, it was power of money. It was four of them. They basically said that everything was encapsulated in those. And so, um, you know, n- knowing yourself, getting enlightened about who you are, what you can really do, I think that's a lifelong journey. We should always be evolving. Um, and then knowing the power of your words, knowing the power of money, knowing the power of, of the weapons that you have at your disposal, you know, whatever those are. Um, I think those are very powerful things. Exactly. So, uh, Amen, sister. Amen. I totally agree with you. I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. For me, when when I got, when I when I faced the ugly truth about myself and I got real and, uh, and I started, you know, getting into that Bible, it was more for me because then I had just started to, you know, venture off into, okay, well, you know, how about this and that? And it just opened my mind up to learn about chakra healing and, you know, meditating and doing, you know, Kadani yoga and things of that nature. And so just, like I said, being spiritually in tune, that's what, you know, the enlightenment led for me, my third eye being opening, you know, for me, when I was able to get my heart together, fix things that was going on in my heart, my mind followed. And so when, when I did that, my third eye was open. I was enlightened. And I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. I do have, you know, good days and bad days like we, we all do. But the thing about it is, you know, for me, uh, I'm a warrior. I've always have been. And I'm going to fight the good fight to the end. And for me, you know, before I leave this earth, I want to make sure, you know, my mark is made. And I don't want to waste my time while being here. That's also for me what enlightenment was, not to waste time because it's precious and we cannot give it back. You know, this pandemic has taught us, you know, or reminded us, you know, it, that life is not promised. It, well, tomorrow's not promised. We're here one day and gone the next. And so just do what it is that you want to do and that you feel like you, you're meant to do. And go for it. It's your time now. And, and let nothing or nobody stop you. I agree with you on a a, a lot of things that you're saying, you know, um, (laughs) time, you know, uh, time is a, is an interesting concept, you know, um, and, and I have for myself, you know, I think everybody struggles with time management to some degree and I've had to learn what am I going to prioritize? Um, am I going to prioritize self-care? Am I going to prioritize getting these tasks done on my to-do list? Am I going to prioritize my relationships? You know, what what do I need to value? What do I need to, um, you know, how do I bring that balance? So I think that that's something. I think enlightenment also is about, when, when I was talking about know yourself, mm-hmm. what do you need to be happy, healthy, fulfilled? What do you need? And I think that every year I've had to reassess that. What do I need? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I might need to take a day off and not work every day because I have a tendency to do that work every single day. I might need some quiet time. I might need, you know, to, to prioritize my relationship. So I think that, you know, as we become enlightened about ourselves we have to look at what what are our needs, what are our values, what are our desires, what are our goals, and, and do a lot of self searching. You know, I, I believe in journaling a lot. I actually have two guided journals that um, I, I do workshops on, and they have a lot of questions in them. You know, um, and it's not the same kind of question. Like I, I I did guided journals that I bought from other people for thirty years, and I never finished. <laughs> Because they kept asking me the same question over and over again, like write three things down that you're grateful for every day or write a goal mm-hmm. that you want to accomplish every week, you know, and I needed some different kinds of things to think about. And so mine are have a lot of different kinds of prompts and a lot of different kind of, um, I guess, thought food for thought for people to mm-hmm. to think about and, 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 you know, try to get in touch with themselves. But I think mm-hmm. that enlightenment is going on that journey going within going on that journey inside and then also challenging what you've been told you know um, whether it's religion whether it's history whether it's politics you know researching and trying to find out is this really true you know and 
And is it true for me? Is it true for the world? Is it true for society? Um, and I think that as you really find out the truth, you become freer and freer. The truth makes you free. Mm -hmm. yep. And, yep. you know, for Even me, if it's the you're, talking about, you're talking about chakras and things like that. Like, you know, growing up, um, I was steered away from, I guess you say, anything alternative. Everything was just very traditional. And as I got to be an adult, I was like, you know, there has to be something to these folk remedies and these things that people have done in these Native American cultures and other indigenous cultures. You know, there has to be something to, for example, sound therapy and essential oils and crystals. And, and I want to find out some about that. I want to fight. Yeah. Because. There's a reason this stuff was put here, and if I'm just ignorant of the reason, then mm -hmm. I am not benefiting from what the creator put here for me to use for my health and well-being. And, yep. and so now I do have, I use essential oils every day, you know, I have yep. crystals in my room. I, I have singing bowls, you know, I listen to different megahertz to try to You know, you want to be both girl, we'll play with you. Yeah. Got your little yeah. spaylin' night, you know. Got my little tourmaline here, you know. Got my supports, too. I actually <laughs> I'll play there. I got my little song. amethyst. Don't let me pull out my little rock. What's that, calcite? This is, what yeah, is that? this is. This is, uh, this is a worry, a worry stone. Ooh, it's got a nice indentation. Is that a slate? Oh, yeah. So okay. it's yeah. See, if I get on Amazon, that's the first thing I'm looking up. Crystals, and I love yeah. for me, I love aromatherapy. I love burning sage, frankincense. Uh, uh was it Frank uh, myrrh? Uh, something else, lavender. Those are my main ones. I like. Um, so yeah, for me, I like aroma, and, and then crystal, and then meditating, and I like to do yoga. Well, I'm not going to say I like to do it, <laughs> but it, it is good for you. I do see the benefits of it, but it's hard for me to be consistent with it. But I do from time to time. I'm not going to lie about you like I'm consistent with it. No, but I do do yoga from time to time. <laughs> I want to be real here. What you see is what you get. So, um, yeah, that that's me and my spiritual journey. And, and being on that spiritual journey is what led me to, you know, writing this book and starting my business. But that, that enlightenment started with me checking my mental health, admitting that I needed to get my mental health in check. And once I did, everything just fell into place. And, you know, once I released those mental bondage and those chains just broke loose and I was able to lift that dead weight and fly. And, and again, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's, it's perfect. Once you just finally, you know, start to go get help, you do have good days and bad days, but trust me, it does get better. And, and, and if you just keep going and stay focused on, you know, the, the means of what you really are trying to, you know, accomplish and, and stay focused on that, you will achieve it one day at a time. You know, change does not happen overnight and it does not happen, you know, just with one little attempt. You have to try over and over and over again and understand and accept the fact that you are going to be told no, you're going to face rejection, you go accept it and, and get over it. That's part of life. That's part of being an adult. That's also part of being spiritually mature. If you want to go to the spiritual side of it, you have to be 
okay with being told no when you ask God for something and he tells you no or he gives you a different answer. Trust and believe if God ever, if you ever pray and ask God for something and he tells you no, it's a good thing. It's never bad. It's it's always good for you. So if you're one of those who say, oh, I praise God. He didn't give me what I want. So mm, he be real or I don't want, I don't believe in this and that. You're spiritually immature. And you have to be that type of person who knows and says, well, God, I asked for this and it didn't work out. But at the end of the day, you are still God. You are still in control. I know at the end of the day, you're going to give me what's right for me. And it's going to be that and then some. And so once you get that mindset and understanding and, 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 and just, Get it instilled in your mind that that's what it is in life, that the way it works is most of the times things that happen to you, it's not your fault, it's out of your control, but somehow, some way, it's your problem to deal with. And so you have to deal with it in the best way possible that, that keeps your cool, calm, and collect and doesn't allow people to take your power or joy away from you. So for me, it was just finding those things like, you know, learning about chakra healing and meditating and praying and aromatherapy and even, you know, writing and journaling. I even got back into the gym and started doing MMA. And just finding friends and a building also is also important to build a village, find people who are like you and feel and think like you. Once it was when I put myself out there and said, you know, to my family, friends, you know, I'm dealing with depression and anxiety. I got so much love and support for the longest. I was scared to tell people that, you know, I was going through depression and, and you know, anxiety because I was that type of person. You know, I traveled all over the world. I've been to just about 50 countries and, and have all these notches under my belt and I'm doing this and that. I don't, I, like I said, I, don't, I look perfect on the outside, but on the inside, I'm a wreck. I'm a mess. And, and it was when, you know, the depths of Anthony Bourdain and Robin Williams, when they, when I heard when they died, I was more hurt when Robin Williams died, but it also hurt me when Anthony died too, because he, he was a travel bug like me. But it was with their deaths, that's what it made me also, you know, say, you know, if I don't get it together, I'm going to be like these people. I'm going to be just another statistic further along. I can see myself, maybe not now, but further along in my thought, I can have all these notches and have all these good things under my belt. But if I don't, you know, feel happiness with inside, have peace of mind and clarity myself and, and let go of the past and all the weight that's keeping me down, all of that materialistic things mean nothing at all. I've, I've, true, I've been to, you know, beautiful countries on beautiful islands and, you know, and I'm, I'm in my bed and I'm crying late at night. Why? Because, you know, I have nobody to share with or I'm by myself or, you know, something in my past, you know, I'm still steady holding on to, although I'm in this beautiful country and this beautiful, you know, place on this, I should be enjoying this, but I can't. So it's been like that for me. I, I know what it is to, you know, have all the, you know, materialistic things in the world. It is still won't bring you happiness. And so it wasn't until, you know, I started to face my demons, face, you know, the people that hurt me in the past, whether they wanted to hear me or not. It's not the fact that, you know, to get my point across it, just to get, what I have to say off my chest. And and as another thing is, is that we have to learn is it's also the power of forgiveness. A lot of the times people think we forgive others for them, but it really has to be for ourselves to release all that guilt and wait to go on for you know our business and do what we have to do in life. Because again, that person that hurt you, trust and believe they are not worried about you. They moved on to their next victim doing their thing. They're going to be them no matter what. And so it's again on you to fix whatever they damage they've done. They not. So that's the ugly truth I have to face about myself. And then also accepting and, and acknowledging you know, my part in it as well. You have to take accountability and actions for your own and just accept, hey, some of the things I did or some of the mistakes that came and hardship that came, I brought it on myself. And these are the things that I need to learn from, you know, these mistakes so I don't do it again. So I stopped calling my mistakes mistakes and start calling them lesson learned. That's what also helped me move on and, and grow and understand that, you know, I wasn't that person who I was in the past. You know, in my 20s, what I did can't compare in my 30s because I'm nowhere near, you know, it's I'm in a completely different paradigm shift, if you will. And so for people out there, those are the, the main things that you, for me, that was the road of enlightenment, if you will, you know, the power of forgiveness, accountability, acknowledgement, you know, acceptance and being told no 
and, and just maturity and, and knowing and understanding, you know, what it is that in life that you're supposed to do. And even if you don't understand and don't know, it's okay. You just, you just sit back and, and, and just wait and then it'll come to you. You don't have to go. Go out there and find it'll come to you. That's also what I learned. You know that that notion: if you stop looking for love, let love find you. It'll come to you. That's true within any you know paradigm we want to apply it to. If we stop, you know, going after things that we want, things that we need will come to us, and it'll be that and then some. And so well, I, I don't want to get too preachy, oh, you know, yeah. I get, like I said, I try not to get preachy, but I do be dropping those knowledge. And like I said, I like to do a little motivational speaking, so I will speak that knowledge and encouragement and try to get those out there who needs to hear it and who, who, who it touches, you know, the right people out there. I'm not worried about, you know, it getting to like millions and millions. There's the right people. If there's only one person out there who hears me and what I say tonight and it changed their life, then mission accomplished, you know, job well done for me <laughs> but um yeah even in, in in getting it so talking with my therapist and just uh him helping me understand how to turn a negative into a positive you know and helping me get back into one of my loves which was writing and journaling i used to do poetry you know, in my teenage years. And so doing that, I had a little composition I had bought and I would just write little affirmations. And now I have stacks of them now, <laughs> little motivations and affirmations that I write in, in journals that I write in um, now. But with that little composition, that's where it all started for the book, if you will. Now we get into the meat and potatoes, if you will. Um, and, and, and journaling in one day, May 25th, 2020 happens, the day, you know, George Floyd died. And so, you know, and as well as the pandemic. Going on, we're all stuck in the house, frustrated, everything shut down, got nothing to do. And me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a busybody. I like to get out and move around. So being stuck in the house, having nothing to do, that also grew into my depression and anxieties and, you know, I needed something to do. And so uh, when the death of George Floyd happened, uh, he's from fifth, excuse me, I'm from fifth ward, he's from third ward. And so we're right down the street from each other in Houston. And it would have been easy for me to go and get involved in the protest. So I thought it'd be cool to do so. However, when the time came, I couldn't because I wanted my voice to be heard, not just in that moment of time then, but I wanted it to be heard long after I'm gone. And so for me, it had to be much deeper. And so when I went home that night, uh, I, I just got spiritually in tune and started talking with God and asking him, you know, to show me the way and what it is that I can do to have my voice heard and, and leave my mark on this world and, and make a contribution to society that's going to be powerful, impactful in a positive way. And this is what he showed me, you know, throughout time, he would send me little messages, you know, talking with people, watching little movies like, you know, Amistad or The Help and, and little movies like that. Uh, he would show it, it would just come to over time and then little by little I would just write what if 
what if this, what if that? And I started doing that June 2020, and by December 2020, I had finished writing the written portion of the book, of the manuscript, and I sent it off to my lawyer. And she read it, and she got back to me, and she was like, I love it, I think it's gonna do good, but what's the name of your business? And that's just one thing about life, when you think you got the handle on it, it comes through and knocks you off your little high horse and reminds you, you don't know Jack. So um, right then and there, I had to hit the ground running. Uh, now, with all the degrees under my belt, it was my intentions to start my business in the real estate side. I had no intentions on starting a small business. I wanted to do the real estate business side. So I had to hit the ground running, learning all the ins and outs, running a small business in Texas. And so from December 2020, March 20, through March 2021, I had to do my homework and research and also, again, being spiritually in tune and talking with him and asking him, you know, because now it's bigger than the book. It's, you know, now it's turning into a business. I had no intentions of, you know, writing uh, or having a business book, but my lawyer told me, you know, in order to sell a product to the public, you have to have a business or LLC. So now I had to hit the ground running. And uh, this is what I came up with, Third Eye Entertainment, uh, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services, which educates, inspires, and motivates all at once. Uh, we, on the services side, offer motivational speaking services. And so if those who are out there uh, would like to have me on their show or their platforms and we can come and talk about you know, social issues, um, happy to do so. You just go to my website and book me. I'm free of charge. Uh, I also do a travel vlog and a vlog about my travel experiences as well as with the food. Um, we also, in a more deeper issue, again, we're bringing social awareness to society. We talk about social issues that are considered taboo or, you know, that are often swept under the rug. Cause in, in, excuse me, for instance, injustice, systemic racism, uh, LGBTQ issues, mental health, suicide prevention, uh, the importance of education. Uh, child sex trafficking, domestic relationships, financial literacy, anything, you know, that's that taboo and, and that, that needs to be talked about and addressed in our society, in our community, especially in the black community, we talk about it here at Third Eye ENT. And so with that being said, our first product that we have to provide to the public is my new book titled, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. And I'm so happy <laughs> to, do, <laughs> to do so. But before I go any further, um, I must say that this book does include a disclaimer. Uh, it's into, inclin, excuse me, intended for a mature audience only. Uh, it does contain sensitive content. So if you cannot take this type of heat, then please do not come to this kitchen. Uh, the book was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism and injustice in America. It's done through graphic but provocative illustrations and it details controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community. Now, the way that I have set it up is within four main categorized paradigm shifts. We have historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And within those four main paradigms, we have sub paradigms, whereas I ask questions in each perspective paradigm about what if this or that happened to you and your people. So for instance, uh, in the historical paradigm, one of the first paradigms we have is, was the year 1619, I believe. And it asks the question, what if in 1619, Africans started legally dealing in slave trading, wherein they kidnapped and stole millions of English men, women, and children from their homeland and brought them on slave ships to America? And then you would see the illustrations of things of that such nature. And so basically what the book is just a race role reversal and it's asking the question, what if? Uh, Another reason why I decided to write the book and chose systemic racism is because not only with the death of George Floyd, it also exposed, again, that, you know, systemic racism is alive. A lot of the time people had the excuse was, oh, that George died from a drug overdose. He had fentanyl in his systems or uh, they used that excuse that uh, racism is alive or I don't see it or if it does exist, it's because you guys keep talking about it. And so I thought, like, again, talking with God and asking him, well, what if you know we ask this question or we, we hold the mirror up to their face and show them what we see and what we've been through and how we feel? What if this was happening to you and your ancestors? What if this was happening, still happening to you and your people? How would you feel? And if it's not okay, then why is it okay to happen to black people? And although the book is set up in a gritty and 
grimy way. He will make you uncomfortable, make some uncomfortable. Uh, there's a there's an overall message into it. So if you can make it through historical, political, the first three paradigms, and and come to hip hypothetical, you will see where my main point and focus of the book is, and what I'm trying to practice and preach is unity and compassion for mankind and for all of us. You know, no matter what the skin color is, you know, our level of education, our religion, our, our sexuality, or no matter what, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, why not be kind to one another because we're all going through something personally that we never know. And so why judge somebody when you walk by them just by the way they look, you know? And so that's well, the point of the book. I like oh, that. Sorry. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting premise. And, and when you were talking, what came to my mind was uh, some songs. You know, there was there's actually a song, What If a Woman, you know, where it kind of flips the script, you know, what if a woman stayed out all night? Is that night? Joe? What if a wo- I think so. Yeah. And then I'm thinking of Dante, If I Were a Boy. Mm-hmm. So, those were the paradigm right. shifts, yeah. Right. And, and I, I love those two songs because when you do think about what if, it does make you think, man, this didn't have to be this way and and what if this had happened this way and you do get Mm -hmm. to see basically how sometimes we don't see things until they're pointed out to us in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a movie, I think it was called White Man's Burden with John Travolta and Harry Belafonte where all of the stereotypes that were applied to the black community were applied to the white community in that movie Um, Mm -hmm. and it was just pointing out again let's show you the biases let's show Mm -hmm. them you so that they are very clear in front of you Mm -hmm. um and there's a there's an elliptical poem i think it's actually called elliptical and the poem is actually a series of fragments and it says something like they always don't know how to act you know and and you don't know Mm -hmm. who the they is but you can you know or why did they why did they always be out of control? It has these questions in it, you know, and then as you're reading it, you're like, who are they talking about? And what is the assumption that they're making? And, you know, and then there's a lot of ellipses, a lot of dot, dot, dots, where the fragments are for you to fill in what the prejudice statement is for you to actually recognize your prejudices um, and the stereotypes that exist. So, you know, it's, when people create these kind of paradigm shifting songs and poems in your book, just to kind of mm-hmm. enlighten us to say, Hey, look, 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 look at what mm-hmm. we considered normal and look how wrong it was. Look how, how, you know, unfair it was. Look how biased it was. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it's kind of like, I know as an adult, I sometimes look back at things that I thought were normal as a kid. And now I'm now enlightened. Like I used to watch the Dukes of Hazard as a kid. One of my favorite shows with the I knew as a little kid. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, as a kid, I never paid attention to that flag. I had no idea what that flag meant. And now, as an adult, I'm thinking, we were watching this show every Saturday, Friday, whatever night it was, and they're riding around, just celebrating, you know? Slavery. And it's funny that you mention that, because I actually have a sub-paradigm in Hypothetical that talks about such natures of, you know, Confederate flags and in. And, and in statues that are still standing here and then that the has those debates of whether it should be taken down or not. And so that's funny that you mentioned that with the Dukes of Hazzard and Confederate, because I mentioned that as well as in the book, and precedent or hypothetical paradigm. Either one. Buy the book and you'll see. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I think that enlightenment is about stepping away from what you used to think and saying, let me have an open mind. Let me get informed. Let me re- re- reduce my, my filter, in a sense, and my guard. And just let me take in the information and see, mm-hmm. you know, see if it's true. Because, you know, I was always told, listen to criticism, 
and then evaluate it because that's how you grow and say, is yeah. this true or not? Don't have your guard up and be defensive and just, you know, just want to fight right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Just calm down and listen, you know, mm-hmm. and it's people that will say you have two ears and one mouth for a reason because you're supposed to listen twice as much as you talk. My teachers used to say uh, that. <laughs> But yeah. we can learn a lot by listening. For a reason. <laughs> yeah. You know, we can learn a lot by listening and not just when I say listening, I, I mean also listening in terms of reading things and listening to the message that's on the text, you know, not just verbally listening, but verbally listening is, is great too. Um, so I think that growth is the process of reevaluating and re-envisioning ourselves, our world, um, the future, and, and not being caught up in what always has been and saying, you know, this is what's always, what always has been, so it has to be what always will be. You know, to mm-hmm. be enlightened means that you realize that you can change, you can grow, you can learn. Um, and I want to bring up another book. I like to, to throw books out there at the audience. There's a book called Mindset. Um, and it's about, do you have a fixed mindset or do you have a growth mindset? A fixed mindset says everything is the way it is. It can't be changed. I was born this way. The world was made this way. It was this way before I got here. Mm-hmm. But the growth mindset says everything is changeable with effort. Everything can be, you know, everything can be changed. So I can become smarter. I can become more informed. I can become more enlightened. I just have to get myself in that position and expose myself to the right things like your book. Mm-hmm. That, that mm-hmm. Paradise. Um, mm-hmm. And so many people have that fixed mindset, which means they're never going to grow. They're never going to evolve. They're going to be stuck wherever they are five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now with the same stinking thinking, or they can choose to let that stinking thinking go and, and enlighten themselves, be, you know, exposed to new ideas, new thoughts, learn new things, add new experiences. You know, the brain can grow, the brain can change. Oh yeah. Uh, It's, it's, they call it neuroplasticity. We can change and grow. Um, I just call it reprogramming. Just reprogram that mind. Flip the switch. That's what I had to do. Instead of telling yourself no, tell it yes. Or what? How do you call it? Uh, uh, fake it till you make it. Yeah, um, a little uh, mindset. Fake it till you make it. You gotta believe it before you see, see or have it in your hands. So that's for me. Yeah, the reprogram your mind and and just get it in tune. And so that that's just what it is. And also. What I'm also trying to bring is just that stimulation of conversations. You know, it's my theory when we have these conversations about these issues, that's how change can start. First, we talk about it, acknowledge it. Yes, it's true. It happened. Nothing can, nothing from that can be changed. But you can at least acknowledge and let's talk about it. Don't just sweep it under the rug or ignore it or look the other way or just say, oh, that's just how it is. You as an adult and, and as the an same mature adult should know that right is right and wrong is wrong. And we as an adult should know right from wrong. Now, for the children coming up, it's on us to, you know, shape and mold them and teach, teach them right from wrong. And so they're going to learn what we teach and uh, better yet see what we or do what we or, excuse me, how we're saying that. Do what they see us do. And so it, it's on us to, you know, create that, that notion and change. And for me... It's my hope and prayer that with this book, change again may not happen. I realize it doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen with just one person, you know, complaining. When you have more than one person coming together, it's not so much a complaint. It's a concern in terms to a a universal issue that people care about and that want to get involved in. And so when all people, when more people get along and say this is the issue and we need to work on that and come up with ways to change, then that's when, you know, that systemic change can happen. And so we don't have to talk about systemic racism anymore. Quite frankly, I am tired of talking about systemic racism. I'm tired of waking up and seeing on CNN, you know, another unarmed black person being killed, you know, by, you know, police officers because they feared for their life. Although this black person was unarmed and was running away from, you know, most of the time or half the time, you know, was running away. 
or was trying to get away from the situation, whatever the situation would have been, they were unarmed. And, and I just, so with this book again, it's, it's to, to help, you know, stimulate those conversations. And, and the, the reason again, why it's set up with the gritty, grimy, provocative illustrations is because where the people are talking about it, you know, good or bad, it's what I've learned from, you know, number 45, you know, whether there's always going to be somebody condoning, you know, what you do and what you say, what you stand for, you know, even after, you know, he ended his, you know, four years in office, he still had 75 million people, you know, condoning him and, and, and rooting on what he was doing. And so that to me right there shows that no matter what, it's always going to be somebody in your corner that's agreeing with what you're doing. And so you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. So with this book, whether somebody's talking about it, good or bad, they're going to talk about it no matter what. So with that being said, you can't unring the bell. And so once that person shares their opinion about this book and says this or that, I want to say like eight times out of ten, somebody's going to share their rebuttal or their opinion about it. And then somebody else is going to tag in the conversation and somebody else is going to tag in. And before you know it, they're having the conversation. And, and <clears throat> again, I'm well aware that, you know, it may go nowhere fast, but, you know, nothing beats a failure but a try. But, you know, what else then? What if this is the generation that plans to see for the next? What if this book helps along with that? You know, it's just what if. And for me, I, I, at least I can say I tried. You know, I just didn't sit back and watch time roll. You know, I got involved more than just in that moment of time. When I'm dead and gone, my voice still will be heard, you know, through this book. And so that's what, you know, what if a controversial paradigm shift for me is, is all about, you know, stimulating, you know, what, what third INT is all about, you know, pushing those issues and those envelopes for us to talk about these these issues that need to be talked about. Um, I, again, why I chose systemic racism first is because, again, when the death of George Floyd happened, that's just how it kicked off. But I got other issues that I'm passionate about, more so, you know, with the mental health awareness and suicide prevention in our community and with in the youth because you know they're the ones who's going to take over next and so it's on us to encourage them to get their mental health in check so when their time comes for them to rule and take over they will be able to handle the reins and they won't you know take themselves off the map like so many of us have have done you know I don't want to sound like I'm rambling or anything but these are the things I think you know when I when I sit back and I think you know what it is that, you know, I can do to help and talk about, you know, I want to use my platform. When I first had this, you know, website, I was just going to do a travel blog and talk about, you know, my travel experience and stuff, but it's much bigger than that. I'm different from what I was. Like I said, it just keeps me growing. You elevate, you become different from who you were in the past. You become a better person. And, and it's okay to be, you know, a person, you know, who's a vanity and say, oh, I'm different. I'm not like most. That's, that's cool and all. But for me, when I say different, I mean to be, you know, humble from who you was in the past, that, that negative person that you was, that person that people didn't like. And when you recognize that person and you try and you change, you try to change, you know, that's when all the things that you want, all the good and that and then some comes to you. That's what I've realized and seen. And it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> Don't get that twisted. It takes time to manifest and it takes time to prosper. So you just have to, you know, stay the course and and, and, and believe in yourself. And if you are a person that's spiritually in tune, you believe in God. And and that's that for that. I often tell, you know, with the third eye unity, you know, we have it under our, our mission statement that the pandemic has taught us that, again, life is, you know, and I promise we're here one day and gone tomorrow. So for those out there who feel it's their time, you know, to to live that good life, that life that they're meant to have, it's time to go after it. It's now or never. And I often tell people, you know, reprogram your mind, get that mindset. That if you want that good life, then you get that mindset that you're going to get rich during this pandemic or you're going to die trying. Uh, I had this little joke I tell with my friends, you know, I'm trying to either, either you're trying to get rich and trying to come, excuse me, trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There's no more in between. And so. For those out there who either you know they come up or they come back, so no more in between. And and with that, uh, the model that we have at Third IE Unity is manifest, plan, prepare. 
And what we say about that is in order for those to guarantee, to, to obtain guaranteed success, one must manifest what it is that they want in life, speak it into existence like no other, remove all that fear, all that doubt, and replace it with faith. And knowing that, you know, what you speak out, the power of the tongue, what you speak out, you come out of your mouth, comes to, to, to life. And so you write it down, get it in your mind, in your heart, and you speak it out to existence that, you know, hey, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to take my, my family out of this, you know, situation and put them in a better place. You write that out, you get that in your mindset, you speak it, you work on it, and eventually over time, it will come to you. Secondly, you plan what it is that you want to accomplish. Whatever it is in life that you want to do, you take it seriously. And if you want people to take you seriously, you have to take yourself seriously. And so you start doing your homework, start doing your research, start getting your, your ducks in a row. Write down what it is that you're serious and what you're passionate about and all the things that you're willing to do to go after it and then some. Third, you must prepare for what it is that you are about to receive. When I say prepare, I mean get your house in order. Go get, you know, go fix your finances, go get your credit up. If you need to get health wise, go hit that gym. Uh, as far as mental wise, go get your mental health in order. If you need to go to a therapist, go do that. Go mend those broken relationships. Go cut off those people who mean you no good. Do all of that. So, when you when that time comes for you to receive what you have manifested, you will be prepared. You will know how to handle it. You won't squander it. You won't take it for granted. So manifest, plan, prepare for what it is that you want in life, and it will come to you no matter what. I guarantee you. So that's, that's just what we do here at Third Eye Entertainment. You know, you come to Difference World, uh, this is what you what you, what you hear, what you'll be entertained with. So Difference World, come and learn. And as far as my bill goes, uh, it is on pre-sale. Uh, you can go to my website, differenceworld.net. It's on pre-sale for $20. Um, after two weeks, the price will increase. Also, I must note that in addition to the book, we do sell associated merchandise uh, that are in association with What If. Uh, however, they won't be available until October. But we just stay tuned. Go to our website, differenceworld.net, spelled D I F E R N T S W O R L D dot net, and you can go and uh, order your book. Uh, if you'd like, you can also go on Amazon.com. I'm going to tell you now, you have to pay a, a more steeper price. It's as much cheaper if you go to mine, my website, and you get that there. But um, other than that, everybody out there that's listening to me, again, uh, take my life as an example. You know what it is, what, what can happen for you if, you know, you just face the ugly truth within yourself and in your heart and accept the ugly truth in yourself, that if you have an issue that's bothering you and it's holding you back, you go and fix it. Don't wait on nobody else to come and tell you you have an issue. If you know it's something that's not right with you, it's keeping you up at night or having you crying, or you something that's mad, you're mad about or sad about or you holding a grudge to somebody, don't wait for them to fix it because they're not. They have moved on to their next victim. It's on you. Again, it's not your fault. It's out of your control, but it's your problem. And if, if, if you also, if you realize that you have a problem and you don't want to go and fix it, then it's not only your problem, it's your fault. And that, as an adult, that's the ugly truth we also have to face and accept. A lot of the time, my mom and daddy did this or this and that happened to me. I can't move on. No, you don't want to move on. And that's the ugly truth. Because trust me, when you're tired of thinking about those things and you you ready to move on in life, that's just what you do. That's what I did. When I got tired and was ready to move on and let it go, that's just what I did. Whatever I needed to do, I did it. And so for those out there who who saying it or saying, I can't help it, that's what you really want to say is, I'm complacent. I'm comfortable. I don't want to change. And so... When it comes to, you know, on that spiritual path of enlightenment and, and bettering yourself, it also goes in for people who hang around and who you allow in your inner circle. And even if it's family members, you know, if they mean you no good, you have to, you know, I won't say get rid of your family members, but learn how to keep them, love them from a distance, I would say for your family. But your friends and your associates, those who mean you no well, you get rid of them quick, fast, in a hurry and never look back. 
and, and don't leave, <laughs> don't drop a tear, lose no week of sleep of them. But it's going to take that as well to help you get get on get get to what you need. That when I started, you know, cutting those people off, they were no no good for me, and mending those bridges for you know people that I pushed away who who were right for me. Then that's also when things started to come into play for me, and, and, and things started to what I thought I lost or missed out on. God repaid me back ten times. That's also another thing he'll do. But you think you've lost out on? You just pick up the pieces and then move on and, and keep faith in your heart that you know it's going to get better and he'll pay you back. Then eventually he will, and you it'll be like nothing you expected. I never ever ever would imagine when I was 13, 14 years old, you know, sleeping on the floor, you know, crying, bawling my eyes out. That you know, all before the age of 20, I'd be you know traveling the world and you know having degrees. Excuse me, 30. <laughs> <laughs> traveling, you know, all over the world and having these degrees and have my own business and be an author all before, you know, I'm 30. I would have never believed that at, a, at that age, but just as, like, I kept the faith and kept going on time, and even, you know, when I didn't understand it, I just lead towards his understanding. That's what it's going to take. Don't lead on your own understanding because you don't understand it. So lean on somebody else who knows, and that's only God. And so that's what it was for me. That's that's what my spiritual God, path of enlightenment has, has gotten me to and has brought me from. And I'm so grateful for it to be on this journey and continuing to grow on this journey. This is a journey that's going to be everlasting. It's, it's nonstop and, and it's, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be easy. You know, again, I have good days and bad days. I am not a perfect person. I do got a dark side to me, but, you know, I'm a good person still. And, and that's what it is to know that, you know, God loves you and you have to love you. And you have to forgive yourself again. The power of forgiveness, that's, that's also what it's going to take. Forgiving yourself and others and then just letting go and moving on and realizing that the power of forgiveness is not for that person that hurts you. It's for you. So once you realize that and accept that, you, you free as a bird. You have so much weight lifted. I can tell you, I'm a living witness. When I forgive, when I forgiven, you know, the person that, that hurt me and just said, hey, I'm, I'm, and I told them, you know, I'm not going to forgive you for you. I'm going to do this for me. I let them know it wasn't for them. It was for me. But even as such, it was so liberating to do just to let them know they have no more power, no more control over me. I run this, not them. And even as such, think about this. When you're thinking about that person and mad at them and about how they hurt you and they're not even worried about you, just think they have power over you and they don't even know it. You've given them your power. You, you've given all your time and energy to a person, you know, or, or thing that's not even concerned of you. Don't probably don't even remember you, even if it's a situation that's long overpassed. You know, some people stay stuck on issues that happened years and years and years ago. So for me, that's how it was. I'd be mad on a situation that happened years ago and that person I knew for a fact probably wouldn't even remember my name <laughs> but here I was sitting thinking about that that incident and it was on me to just accept the fact that hey it is what it is it's, it, he may have they, that person may have wronged me but it's on me to pick up the pieces and move on and now here it has been such and such years and I'm the one who's allowed this because I'm the one who's supposed to take control of this ship I'm the one that's supposed to be driving so this, this, that's just like anybody, that's, that's that notion that anybody can apply. You're in control of this ship. So don't let nobody else drive the boat but you. And that's, that's your mental boat, your, your spiritual boat, your emotional, your financial, your physical. Whatever boat that, that you're driving at a certain time, don't let nobody else drive it but you. And let God be, you know, your, your, your captain, if you will, your second lieutenant command. Let him be on your shoulders, God. For those out there who want this, and I got to... Well, line, if you will. <laughs> well, yeah. well, we're going to wrap up. Um, so you've given a lot of tidbits. You know, enlightenment is about choosing to grow mm -hmm. and choosing to grow yeah. through changing your mindset and changing your thinking and being open to change, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. as you said, and, and letting go right, of those things that hold back. us back, including my audio, the things that we right find comfortable. Because your and comfort zone can be something that holds you back I mentally and crazy, physically. Sure so I want to thank Different for being on the show today as we talked about her and Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, again, this is when I just started out, and as you guys seen during our conversation, we talked about everything, you know, from meditation to chakra healing, 
um, you know, aromatherapy as you guys <laughs> uh, listen in and as well as talking about my book, um, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And so, again, big shout out to her for having me on her show and giving me the chance to, you know, promote myself um, and, and, and uh, just share my story and my testimony like I did. I truly appreciate that. Um, as well as you guys, if you guys liked our interview and what we were talking about, be sure to show me by liking, sharing, comment, and definitely subscribing to my YouTube channel, you guys. I definitely appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Uh, I don't care if it's one, two views, two, three likes. I don't care. Keep it coming, you know. It's not about how many, you know, the, the, the quantity, so to speak, it's the quality. And so uh, I do appreciate it, and, you know, keep it coming. As well as, you guys, don't forget... You can check me out on my other social media handles on my, excuse me, my website. Uh, there's listed is that's my Twitter, my Instagram. I'm no longer on Facebook, unfortunately, but I still am on YouTube, you guys, as well as with TikTok. So be sure to go to my website, differenceworld.net, and check out all of my other social media handles, as well as you can book me for any type of motivational speaking event you'd like for me to be part of or any grassroots conversations. I am free of charge as of now. All you would need to do is just go to my website, again, differenceworld.net, and you will book me there. Also, you guys, you can, don't forget, go to my website, too, to cop my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, less, yesterday was a um, social awareness vlog. As you guys seen, I just dropped uh, the What If social awareness vlog, you know, detailing the uh, clips of my illustrations from my book uh, with the historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical uh, paradigm. So I shared that and getting some reviews on that. So I do appreciate it. And again, remember you guys, I've written this book to encourage and, and, and push for thought-provoking conversations and consistent conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised that this is a sensitive content. It's intended for a mature audience. So if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Why? Because that's the point of the conversation, you guys, or the point of my book, is to have these conversations that are often swept under the rug, that are hard to have, people like to turn a blind eye to. We need to do these things because, in my opinion, that, that is where we can see systemic change as well as there is power in healing your past. And so when you talk about it, acknowledge it, and come up with ways to create systemic change, uh, then that is where you know we can grow and move forward uh, from you know our, our traumatic past. Uh, as a whole and so again you guys go to my website differencewell.net and get your copy of my book what if a controversial paradigm shift definitely uh, and moving right along on a, a different train uh, what else we got you guys uh, coming up tomorrow and so um, uh, what's tomorrow Thursday and so, you know, Thursdays we do our pop culture review, either a movie review or, uh, um, you know, celebrity gossip. And so I think with uh, the theme that we're going to try to keep it going with it being Women's History Month, uh, we just came uh, from Black History Month, and so transitioning into it, I think none other than a, a good movie review would be Hidden Figures. And so... I'll be dropping that tomorrow, you guys. That's why you have to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button again. So when you guys, uh, when I drop this content, you come into Difference World and you, you come and see what's going on. Come and learn about your girl and what I, what I have to bring. Uh, so check that out. Be on the lookout for that, you guys. Uh, what else we got going on? Let's move on to the last topic on the, our agenda, the mental health check. Um, this is the last but most important topic that we do here uh, with the, uh, Difference World and Third Eye Entertainment pushing for and uh, advocating for mental health wellness, um, no matter, you know, the, the gender, the color, the race, you know, your sexual orientation, everybody goes through mental stress, mental anguish. And so for anybody that's going through any type of mental anguish right now, being bullying, depression, feeling suicidal, anxiety attacks, whatever the case may be that you may be going through, please listen to me and know that it's okay to not be okay, but do not sit there and not be okay. It is on you to get up and go get help. Whatever that case may be to you, talking with a therapist, family member, getting on medication, mending broken bridges. There are uh, many of alternative things that you can do, but just know that you have to do whatever it is that you need to keep yourself from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. 
if you or if you know anybody that need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can text or call 988 or text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you can visit mentalhealthishealth.us or 988lifeline.org. Or you can, for those that are outside of the U.S. <laughs> that like watching your girl, you can visit encounseling.com. Again, encounseling is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, it is on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, okay? And also remember, before we close out, I uh, remember that whatever you are going through, this too shall pass and you are not alone. And so, again, find what works best for you to keep that helps keep you from going off the deep end. Okay. And so, you guys, uh, moving on and ending this out on a positive note. Um, <clears throat> again, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview. Definitely, I can't, you know, say it enough. Be sure to show me by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I definitely appreciate all the love and support I am getting. Again, please keep it coming. And as far as when it comes to you guys out there that's going after your goals and your dreams, like I said, you either have to have that mindset of when you on that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. And so with that being said, you guys, whatever it is in life that you believe in, you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Different world. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.